Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janel Norvell. This edition Stop Stories. St. Lucians are urged to follow COVID protocols as three cases of the dangerous Delta variant are confirmed in country. Honorable Dr. Ernest Hille shares his vision for St. Lucia's economic growth through investment. And Youth Development and Sports Minister Honorable Kenson Kazimi applauds the National Olympic team. St. Lucia's national health response systems have been heightened following the confirmation of the Delta COVID variant in country. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George some two weeks ago had alerted the nation to the possible entrance of the Delta variant given that neighboring Martinique and St. Vincent had recorded cases. The CMO says at this juncture, it is absolutely critical for all St. Lucians to adhere to the protocols in order to mitigate the spread of this highly transmissible and dangerous strain of the COVID-19. On Friday, 13th August 2021, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George, during an update to the nation, explained that the country had confirmed its first cases of the COVID-19 variant of concern, the Delta variant. Results from the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFA, confirmed three cases of the Delta variant, formerly known as the Indian variant. CAFA also confirmed three new cases of the Alpha variant, formerly known as the British variant. All three individuals are locals, bringing the total number of cases of the Alpha variant recorded in country to date to 54. And our three Delta variant cases, three are US nationals, and we have um, one St. Lucian case. Of the six cases, only one of them is a fully vaccinated um, person from the, Del the three Delta variants. The, they're all female and they range from 18 to 37 um, years old. Of the, the four local cases, three of the four local cases are from the south of the island. So as we as we um, looking at our data for the last few weeks, we suspected that we may have had the Delta variant in country and we have um, just received the confirmation that we do have the Delta variant in country. The Delta variant was first diagnosed in India in October of 2020. As of the 3rd of August, the variant has been confirmed in at least 132 of all six of the World Health Organization's regions and in at least 14 of the Caribbean islands. The Delta variant forms about 90% of new cases in the UK and over 80% of cases in the US and France. This variant, due to its level of transmissibility, has become the dominant variant in some 13 countries. The variant remains of great concern for health officials due to a number of reasons, including the fact that the Delta variant is 97% more transmissible when compared to other strains of the virus. It is known to cause more severe disease, hospitalization, as well as increased ICU admission and deaths. Um, they note that the preliminary evidence suggests that the hospitalization rate for unvaccinated persons is a lot higher and the Delta variant is known to have an estimated over 100 times the viral load of the regular strain of the SARS-CoV and also a very a shorter time for exposure to infection compared to the regular strain. Now we, we do have a definition as to what a contact is when we do contact tracing and it is based on the contact time with a positive case. Because of the, the, the viral load of, of the Delta um, variant, it means it takes a shorter time period in which you can become positive if you are in contact with someone who is positive. So it is a lot easier to spread and it also spreads to a lot more um, persons. The chief medical officer explained that the regular COVID-19 strain and the alpha variant saw the targeting of elderly individuals and individuals with chronic conditions. However, with the Delta variant, the younger age groups are being affected and having complications. A trend, according to Dr. Belmar George, already being witnessed at the respiratory hospital as younger individuals, some of them without chronic conditions, are being affected. 
Analyzing the situation in neighboring Martinique, the CMO indicated that the confirmation brings into focus St. Lucia's health system's capacity to deal with the Delta variant. To put it in context of reality, when we look at the, the, the health situation of Martinique being overwhelmed, we have to use our capacity, our respiratory hospital bed capacity is 123. We can bring it to a maximum of 120, 130, squeezing in some more beds. It is extremely important at this point that whatever measures we have in place and that our population note the critical point that we are, we cannot allow our health system to be overwhelmed. We have 123 beds within our respiratory hospital. We cannot allow our complicated cases, our cases that need hospital care, to come close to that number. And this is where we start getting increased deaths, probably not just from being, um, being COVID-19 positive, but the incapacity of the health system to manage those numbers. The chief medical officer urged all individuals to follow all stipulated COVID-19 protocols, taking personal responsibility for their actions and the health and safety of the public. Meantime, in the last 28 days, the island has recorded 640 cases of COVID-19 with a prevalence rate of 337.3 per 10,000 persons. Dr. Michelle Fassois is a national epidemiologist. Over the past seven days, um, we have had six, 200, sorry, and 94 cases reported daily. Um, when you look at our cases over the past 14 days, we have recorded 497 compared to the previous 30 days where we were at 143 cases. Um, similarly, if you look at the last month or the last 30 days, we have recorded 654 cases compared to the 271 in the previous 30 days. When we look at the distribution by age and sex, we note that um, male and female, there isn't a significant difference in the male and female coming in with COVID-19. However, we do see that the age group 25 to 49 is the age group that is most affected, followed, presenting, sorry, with the highest number of cases, followed by the age group 50 plus. Next slide, please. Um, when we look at age specific rates, um, we continue to see the age group 25 to 49 being the most significantly affected, um, which is actually followed by our age group 18 to 24. So when we adjusted based on the population of the various age groups, our age group 18 to 24 is actually the second um, most affected um, age group compared to our, um, the other age groups. We know that our children, um, although they do contract COVID-19, the numbers are still relatively small. 95 COVID deaths have been recorded. 66% of the deaths are male. The age group 65 and over is most significantly affected given the likely complications from the underlying conditions of diabetes and hypertension. When we look at where these cases are coming from, the numbers point to castries in terms that we have the highest number of cases from castries. But when we um, do the prevalence by health district, we'll see that Babono would be the region most heavily affected, followed by ancillary and grossly. So these are the areas also, some of these areas that we are seeing breaches in um, protocols, that we are seeing many activities happening, and it is reflecting in our data. Um, this is a distribution, next slide please, um, by months, just so you could see what we have been tracking. Our major outbreak has been in January to February, and in March we saw a, a, an abrupt decline in the number of cases. But I want you to focus also on August here. And we are at August, almost halfway through August, but we are at the numbers that we saw in July, midway through August. So we are expecting the numbers to continue climbing. Um, there are several reasons we now faced with the variants of concern. We had several activities and um, it is of note that um, the numbers have continued to climb. We have not included the numbers for today as yet, but they are also significant. National epidemiologist Dr. Michelle Fassois.
In other developments, Minister for Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture and Information, Honorable Dr. Ernest Hilaire on Friday met with the Chief Executive Officer and Managers of Invest St. Lucia as he continues to familiarize himself with personnel at the various departments within his ministry. The discussion centered not only on the operations of the agency, but importantly the role of the agency in growing the economy. Hamadi Mark reports. Minister for Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture and Information, Honorable Dr. Unes Tele and Parliamentary Secretary Honorable Gibeon Ferdinand, along with Permanent Secretary in the Ministry, Donalyn Viti, have been meeting with entities under the investment portfolio to chart the way forward for St. Lucia. Friday, 13th August 2021, the team met with Invest St. Lucia to familiarize themselves with the work and processes of the agency. It is really to get an update on the work program of the various agencies, to get a, an understanding of what they've been doing, to also get an understanding of how they see their work program evolving over the next five years. With a new government um, in place, there is a new mandate, there are new visions, there's a new vision, there are ideas that we would want to ensure that the agencies understand our priorities for us and to have that interaction so they understand where we want to head. Some of the agencies have been very proactive in reading the manifesto and already starting to suggest how they can incorporate the, their promises made in the manifesto within their work program. So I think for us it has been a very productive week. Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture and Information, Honorable Gibeon Ferdinand, indicated that some of the initiatives of Invest St. Lucia are in alignment with the government's vision for the country. We noticed that there is a boost program that is aligned with the idea of the youth economy that the Prime Minister had been very articulate about in our campaign. And um, we were able to get a sense of what is happening in the in Invest St. Lucia with other major developments such as the um, land rationalization in the north and south. Um, and I think that gives us an idea of what programs Invest St. Lucia has that can help us achieve the objectives that our government has set. Chief Executive Officer of Invest St. Lucia, Roger Cherry says Invest St. Lucia and the government of St. Lucia have a similar objective, to put St. Lucia and St. Lucians first. One initiative being undertaken by the agency that speaks to this vision is land rationalization. Part of our strategic initiatives has been to give St. Lucia ownership of St. Lucia. And, and one of the main initiatives that we've done towards that is... Um, uh, to facilitate land ownership by two strategic initiatives. One is land development, land that Invest in Lucia owns, have been developed and sold um, primarily, if not 100%, to St. Lucians. The other aspect of that is land development as well, but what we call land rationalization. In that case, the individual St. Lucians who have lived on lands owned by the state or by Invest St. Lucia for a number of years, and the aim really is to provide um, uh, the, the, the basic infrastructure at least, and in some cases very extensive interest infrastructure, and sell those lands at reasonable rates, um, uh, way below market rates to, to St. Lucians. The minister and his team will continue to meet with key agencies under his portfolio as he charts the way forward. From the Government Information Service, Humadi Mark, reporting. Minister for Youth Development and Sports, Honorable Kenson Kazimi, has congratulated St. Lucia's Olympic team on representing the country at the 2020 Olympic Games held in Tokyo. Honorable Kazimi said despite being faced with the uncertainty brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic, the team persevered and represented to the best of its ability. We applaud the very tenacity of our champions and remain greatly appreciative of the fact that you, the athletes, have given your very best performance every time you stepped out into your competition zones. We trust that this was an unforgettable experience which will elevate you into an even greater dimension of your athletic abilities. The Ministry takes this opportunity to wish you all the best in your future endeavours as you journey back to your respective destinations. We urge you to continue striving to be the best version of yourself that you can possibly be. 
Rest assured, the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports remains committed to providing our support to assist you and all our future Olympians in striving for gold. St. Lucia's contingent at the Olympic Games consisted of high jumper Lovan Spencer, swimmers Jean-Luc Zephyr and Michaela Charlemagne, and sailor Stephanie Duvaux-Lavelle and Luke Chevrier. In other youth matters, St. Lucia joined the world in celebrating International Youth Day on the 12th of August 2021 under the theme Transforming Food Systems, Youth Innovation for Human and Planetary Health. Honorable Kenson Kazimi, in a statement commemorating the observance, encouraged young St. Lucians to innovate, utilize best practices and the nation's natural resources to contribute to St. Lucia's food security. As a small island developing state, we are tremendously endowed with natural ecosystems that yield and contribute to the sustainability of terrestrial and marine life. It is through these natural resources young people can be innovative in realizing human and planetary health. It is no doubt that a healthy nation is a productive nation and we must place emphasis on reducing poverty, mitigating climate change, promoting health, nutrition and sustainable livelihoods. Therefore, I take this opportunity to call to action young people who will use technological solutions to engage in best practices for a healthier planet. The Youth Development and Sports Minister called on the youth to continue participating in nation building and positively influence the socio-economic and environmental landscape of the country. This is NTN Nightly. Primus Hutchinson is up next. Stay with us. Caribbean Ties, a connected people then and now. A unique exhibition that presents the diversity and complexity in the Caribbean before the arrival of the Europeans. August 1st to the 31st at the 100-year-old Anglican Annex. Open daily, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Be part of the past, still present today, through stunning exhibits accompanied by live cultural street entertainment. Save the dates, August 1st to the 31st. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur Ta, Janelle, Monsieur Madame, Department qui n'est responsable de pour information en gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS, à sa petite télévision nationale PIA, NTN, car vous êtes aux nouvelles à Creole, vous êtes au Primus Hutchinson. Ministre de Santé, j'ai découvert six cas de maladie corona neuf là, cette ci Trois ans, c'est Jean-Amérique qui est ni Delta variant là, pendant un autre trois, c'est cette ci et trois Delta variants, ça là, c'est femme qui a l'âge de 18 ans pour toute cette année. Du une conférence face au public vendredi bon matin à son NTN, chef officier médical, Dr. Sharon Belma George, euh, Dr. Michel François, et nos tech présenté un rapport à sa situation neuf de maladie corona à cette ici. Selon Dr. Belma George, trois en ces quatre qui trouvent maladie neuf là, qui sont à ce pays là, mais la majorité, c'est qu'à ce c'est pas ouais ça t'es pas ouais qui est malade les neufs là c'est castui babono aslawi et canawi officier de communication en département santé fonel neptune expliquer des grosses situations ça là ben non et puis variant neuf ça là y aura qui est delta nous et qui nous qui joint il y a si mais plus ceux qui joint plus moun qui qui ni maladie covid 19 et puis delta puisque delta a si mais plus plus vitement aussi nous kaiwe plus moun ki kai rive l'hôpital et puis plus moun ki kai mort et puis a fait di delta variant la et puis ça nous kaiwe aussi c'est moun ki poko jwenn la vaccine la aussi c'est moun sa ki ka affecté par um, delta variant la et puis aussi nous wè ça uh, c'est jeune moun la et puis c'est pour raison ça là nous kai encourager moun encourager ces jeunes moun la pour prendre la vaccine la présentement L'année 487 cas de maladie de corona qui augmente entre deux semaines qui passent seulement. Le ministre qui a responsabilité pour santé et qui a fait les plus grands citoyens en gouvernement de cette ici, Honorable Moses Jobatis, a trouvé un bureau 
pour commencer le travail officiellement l'année passée. Durant le temps, il était jeune et puis les officiers de santé pour faire même au courant. Et puis, opération en ministère de santé. Parmi ces officiers qui ministre Jean-Baptiste tient une discussion, c'est le chef officier médical, Dr. Sharon Belma George. C'est officier santé à présenter Honorable Jean-Baptiste. Et puis, ces situations qui a existé en ministère de santé présentement, et en particulier la situation des malades de Corona. Ministre Santé Jean-Baptiste déclare que malgré la responsabilité qu'a gardé formidable, il est même très excité pour commencer la route nouveau salaire. Selon le ministre Santé, en conversation, il était et puis il s'est pas maintenant en ministère, il vous suivait un rapport sur la long travail qui est en ministère et la responsabilité de divers départements de santé. Le ministre Jean-Baptiste dit que c'était une discussion qui était très gentille et qui était très appréciable pour tout support et assistance et vous suivez pour le premier jour en travail. Le ministre de Santé, Honorable Jean-Baptiste, fait comprendre la santé publique là, c'est ça qui est plus important pour cet moment. Le gouvernement qui a mis tout effort et placé tout commitment pour essayer d'adresser le secteur de santé cette ci Honorable Jean-Baptiste dit aussi, à ces plusieurs discussions, il était chaîne. Et puis, chef officier médical, Dr. Sharon Belma George, il trouvait bon conseil et aussi bonne direction concernant des gros maladies de corona à pays là. Alors, il m'a été rapporté pour le premier ministre Honorable Philippe J. Pierre et le membre du cabinet des ministres du gouvernement à cette situation corona comme qui a existé pour le présent. Honorable Jean-Baptiste dit aussi, il était en discussion et puis les officiers de santé à l'hôpital Victoria. Le ministre Santé a dit qu'il a discuté en qui meilleure façon pour éprouver les conditions à l'hôpital Victoria. Il a aussi été en discussion et puis les chefs docteurs à l'hôpital Saint Jude. Le ministre Santé a été en discussion et puis les officiers à l'hôpital Saint Jude pour garder qui plus vite l'hôpital a commencé l'opération. Le ministre Santé a Jean-Baptiste remarqué que pendant qu'il était en ministère, il visitait divers travail et qu'il a une bonne discussion et qu'il échange de bonnes compagnes qui passaient très bien. Le ministre de a déclaré que ces diverses discussions étaient été et puis le chef officier médical a gagné le travail, a été fourni et puis ses directions pour ça bien adresser la maladie corona pour ce temps pour venir. Si le ministre de la Santé, honorable Monsieur Jean-Baptiste, Wevely, c'est pour établir un système de santé côté tout le peuple, cette liste qui a été un service de santé qui est égal pour les toute organisation et le travail de santé bien mobilisé pour travailler ensemble et puis pour capable d'établir un système de santé qui a l'avantage de tous ces Le ministre de la Santé, honorable M. Jean-Baptiste, dit que c'est espoir pour que tous ces lycéens en une position pour recevoir un plus haut et plus meilleur service de santé. Le département de l'agriculture, pêche, ressources naturelles et coopératives a commencé un projet pour aider et assister à augmenter les affaires de production de caco en cette ci le projet Kakoa, Zala, c'est pour la réhabilitation, la mutation Kako, pour vivre planter plein Kako qui peut être performé à façon qui est acceptable et pour grandir à ce que acteur côté qui dit Kako planté pour aider à augmenter la production et improuver la résilience des changements climatiques et ces maladies qui peuvent affecter plein Kako. En bas, le projet Zala, c'est Fama qui a trouvé l'occasion pour signer un agrément qui a facilité l'effort pour les officiers de trouver l'information à cette situation plein caco en pays, des gros production avec la vente de caco qui puis coûter pour produire caco, puis qui a coûté pour produire. Il y en a ce qui a fait, c'est pour réduire à ce plein caco à 2 dollars plein, avec le chef officier agricole là, pour la région 6, qui aussi se coordonnateur pour le projet caco, c'est Elroy Alexis. Nous que l'initiative là, c'est pour adresser de manière puis pour caco trop bas, et c'est un trois cassement pour peser la place là à de façon, percer la place là, à de façon pour aussi production et pour l'année plus d'informations information concernant les productions caco. Alexis parlait des plans pour ressusciter et grandir le secteur caco et pour produire plans pour les femmes à servir. Le département des affaires agricoles là, qui a collaboré et puis le département qui a fait recherche en production caco à l'Université West Indies en Trinidad pour ça capable, pour analyser et pour garder aussi si on a établi une corporation de la place pour les cultivateurs et bien, les femmes à coco, les femmes qui sont intéressées pour acheter plein coco, et bien, plein coco, excusez-moi, c'est venu pour faire contact et puis officier extension apparaît sur. C'est plein coco available à station agricole, en souffrir vis-à-vis pour Mayas. Et c'est comme ça. Nous avons une nouvelle, monsieur, madame. Je vous remercie de votre
pour qu'elle garde une bonne invitation. Pour que je ne puisse encore, si Dieu conserve la vie, je vais poser une autre nouvelle en courriel. Je vous souhaite à tout le monde uh, un bon fin de semaine et content pour une bonne précaution, puisque l'année de la maladie de Corona qui est plus avancée à présent. Eh bien, à présent, on va vivre pour cette chaîne. Merci à Pearl Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.